Hello and welcome. My name is Brandon Holman, and this training is intended for ancillary personnel whose duties may take them around a nuclear medicine department. My goal in this brief presentation is to help you understand your role when working around a nuclear medicine department and to hopefully give you peace of mind. As you are probably aware, a nuclear medicine department utilizes several different kinds of radioactive material, which produces ionizing radiation. These different kinds of radioactive material are used to not only diagnose and treat patients, but ensure certain medical equipment is calibrated and working properly. Normally, housekeeping personnel should not come into contact with radioactive material since it is all handled by the nuclear medicine technologists and kept secured in certain designated rooms, such as a hot lab. However, if housekeepers or other ancillary staff do see radioactive material that is not secured, that is left in the hallway, or that does not seem to be in the right place, please ensure the proper personnel, such as a technologist, manager, or radiation safety officer, are informed. The department should have these contact numbers posted. Now, unsecured radioactive material is unlikely, but if this were to occur, ancillary staff should not handle the radioactive material or remove anything that may contain radioactive material while performing their duties. Here are some common radioactive material sources that are used to test and or calibrate medical equipment. All these sources should be stored properly in a designated area, usually the hot lab. All these sources should also have a radiation symbol on them, letting you know it is radioactive. But as a reminder, housekeeping and other ancillary staff should not come into contact with these sources pictured here, as their duties do not take them into the hot lab and the sources are all handled and stored by the nuclear medicine technologists. Here are some more examples of radioactive material used in the nuclear medicine department. Some sites will order radioactive material in a 10 cc vial shown here in figure one. Most sites will order unit doses in a syringe depicted in figure two. All radioactive material should have a radioactive sign that resembles figure three. However, some radioactive material come in the form of capsules as seen in figure four. They arrive on site in a radioactive labeled container, but once outside the container, they can look like any other capsule. If capsules are found around the nuclear medicine department, as a precaution, treat it as radioactive material. Radioactive material is used only in the nuclear medicine department, and very rarely in angio specials labs for therapy purposes. No radioactive material should be in any other location at your facility. Note that x-ray systems do not contain radioactive material and only cause x-rays when they are turned on and the x-ray control button is pushed. There are no radiation hazards near an x-ray system that is turned off. Here are some radioactive signs you may see in the department. Sometimes these signs produce fear and anxiety, but rest assured that in all the areas where your duties take you, the nuclear medicine technologist performs daily surveys and spill checks to ensure the department is safe from contamination. Their job and goal are to keep you and other personnel safe from any potential hazards associated with radioactive material. Before we wrap things up, there are certain items that must be included in this training. First, your nuclear medicine department should have locations where the licensee has posted or made available notices, copies of pertinent regulations, and copies of pertinent licenses and license conditions. You should never have a need to see these documents, but know they are available to you. Also, in the unlikely case where you believe you were exposed to radiation while working in the department, you have the right to be informed of your radiation exposure and bioassay results. If for any reason you would like to contact the radiation safety officer, his or her contact information 
should be posted in the department. And finally, it is important for you to be aware of the RHF-3 form. Each facility that has ionizing producing equipment or radioactive material must have this document posted. This document is a notification to employees that helps you understand your rights and responsibilities pertinent state regulations and also provides contact info for the Department of Health. And that is it. Thank you for allowing me to provide you with this training. If you have any questions or concerns in regards to this presentation, or you have questions that are related to radiation, or you just want to know more about us, please don't hesitate to contact me either by email or the number provided, or you can visit us at www.corwinhp.com. Thank you.